Good afternoon again. Astrid has given a brief introduction of what I have been doing for the last seven years. I've been working as the executive director of Kampala City. That's the only capital city in Uganda. Just one. Um, we have a population of about 2.5 million resident and growing because of the uh, rapid urbanization, which is one of the fastest in Africa, but also um, a lot of migrant and refugee uh, populations coming in by the day. And so it is a very, very rapidly urbanizing uh, city. We have um, 2 million residents. The rest of the population, which is now close to 5 million people, come in and out of the city. So you can imagine the traffic situation. Um, the size of Kampala is 189 square kilometers only with that population. And um, it contributes 68% of the GDP of Uganda. So it's critical and 77% of the taxes of that country. Um, the governance of Kampala, and I'll just to give you a background, uh, before 2011, Kampala was run as a local government, although it was a capital city, and the political leadership had executive power, and for, I think, close to five decades, the city was not going the way that it should go in terms of delivery of services, uh, performance, and so on. So government, uh, by a constitution amendment and an, amend an enactment of the Kampala Capital City Act, changed the status of the city from a district to um, an entity in charge of the city that is directly responsible to government for running the city and created the position of executive director. So that's how I come into office. And um, with that, we also got a minister in responsible for Kampala and the metropolitan area, and the executive director heads the technical team, but we also have the political wing headed by the Lord Mayor. Their role is oversight and policy and ceremonial. The technical wing is responsible for the rest of the administration. Kampala is growing. Uh, it's a growing city, it's a beautiful city. Those are some of my residents there, and those are our streets. Uh, it's a major economic hub. So you have a mix of the second picture from the right with the one in the middle and all those. That's all Kampala. So we have a mix of all different economies, informal, formal, and so on. Yeah, those are, again, some of our residents. I think they were attending the Kampala City Festival. When we came into the city, one of the things that we immediately had to work on was the revenue of the city. Uh, first of all, we restructured the institution. That means we completely broke it down, built it up again, starting with a new structure, new job roles, new job profiles, uh, restarted the staffing. That means we disengaged, I think, literally everybody and started again, gave them opportunity to reapply. And so we started with a fresh team, with a fresh mandate, fresh vision, fresh mission, and then we embarked on the task of getting money to run the city. The revenue was very, very low, and a lot of revenue was being lost in different ways. The, 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 I keep telling people that the situation in Kampala is unique to Kampala. I mean, I don't know how government kept throwing money into the institution in the state that it was for the years that they did. So we're handed a completely dysfunctional organization, and our, our work was to make it functional and transform the city in the process. The system was manual. Everything was manual. Huge files, documents to, uh, to, to file every time anyone made a payment, queues in the banks, looking for books, black books where records were kept, and the records were stacked in sacks in stores. So if you wanted to look for anything, it would take you at least three months to find one document. And you'll probably not find it because someone had walked off with it or the sack had got 
missing in the process of being transferred to the stores. It was just that very unique situation. Cash was being collected, and therefore there was a lot of abuse and a lot of leakage of the cash. We had multiple people collecting as agents for the city. So they'd collect, use our resources, use our stationery, use our name, and give us what they want, and then come and claim a percentage of everything we collected. Uh, so that was going on, and the revenue was very low as a result. There was no city revenue register. Uh, there were many collection centers, different agencies collecting and keeping a lot of it. The entity had 151 bank accounts operating. Um, at the handover ceremony, I was given 20, 23 bank accounts, dug around a bit, found, I think, 32. Dug around a bit more, found like 53. Did an audit and found 151 bank accounts with about 51 billion shillings that no one, including government, knew about. That's why I said it was really unique. Um, there was very, uh, very poor legislation to support revenue mobilization and also poor enforcement as a result. Enforcement was done on a negotiated basis. You paid what you want depending on how well you negotiated. That was the situation we had. Uh, those are our revenue sources. The biggest amount comes from government and right now we are growing our revenue uh, from our own source revenue. The table just shows the detail. What we did is to begin to build an electronic revenue collection and management system. We call it eCity. Now, that is a computer-based revenue system uh, with the objective of modernizing revenue collection through um, being able to assess, being able to collect, and being able to bill our taxpayers. But because they are diverse, we started using um, platforms that everybody had access to, like mobile phones. So now people can pay their taxes using their mobile phones. They can pay uh, through their ATM machines. They can also pay through bank transfers and other internet-based uh, payment revenue, uh, uh, revenues. They, they, we, we put up a platform uh, working with the telecom companies that provide the service and we're therefore able to reach the majority of our clients. We also have an SMS a platform where we send billings to our clients and also receive feedback uh, in our client care center and call centers. Um, we eliminated cash collections, uh, obviously. We improved assessment, billing, and financial, um, financial accountability. This is after we set up the system. We reduced the 151 bank accounts to eight accounts. So I, as the accounting officer, had less of a headache because I just had eight accounts to take care of. And um, we increased citizens' engagements. We increased vigilance in the recovery of arrears, as well as our field collections. And we also encouraged voluntary compliance. So we began to see people taking interest in paying taxes at all. But also, as we use this revenue to improve infrastructure, improve the hospitals, improve the schools, improve the lighting of the city, we began to see a growing confidence in the population, in the citizens, that yes, their money was being applied, and therefore, they were more willing to pay uh, taxes. Um, we also did a revaluation of our property in the city, which hadn't been done for, I think, just under six years. The properties had not been valued. So we did a, a revaluation used, uh, using a computer-aided mass valuation system, and we have been able to capture all the properties in the city and put them on our GIS um, system. We have georeferenced the properties. We have named the, 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 streets, the streets. Uh, for those of you who come from um, other parts of the world, you may not think that naming streets is a great thing. In Kampala, it's fantastic. Everybody's celebrating that their street has a name, their house has a number. Uh, because in the past, if you wanted to find somebody, um, somebody's house, they'll tell you, uh, if you go down this road, you find a mango tree. Go to the left, you find a small herd of goats. Go to the right, you find a garbage pile. That's before we came. There's no garbage piles now. And then it's right there next to the house with a yellow roof. So the next time you go looking for them, 
when the mango tree has been cut and the goats have been eaten and the roof has been colored differently, you will not find them. So that system has now made it possible for people to get better services in terms of emergency services, uh, police can find you where you are, your relatives can find you, uh, delivery and courier systems can find you, and um, even your creditors can find you much more easily. Because those days you just cut the mango tree and they will not be able to find you. Uh, so um, <laughs> we have linked all the, 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 the city address model to all the properties and it is very easy to know which property is there today and which one we haven't built and which one has just come up and we are able to be more efficient in collection of this revenue. And it has grown our revenue from properties to, I think, close to 200 million now. At, I'm sorry, 200%, and we've just done two divisions. We have five. So we see this really, really making a significant uh, contribution to the revenues of the city uh, starting next financial year. We um, were accorded a credit ranking A in the long term, and. A1 in the short term by the World Bank. We wanted to start issuing city bonds, but we had a delay because of the legislation that we operate, which has limits, borrowing limits, which we needed the parliament to lift. Um, we successfully imp uh, implemented public financial management reforms. We are now probably one of the top five most compliant entities in the country in terms of financial management and accountability. The revenue of the city has grown to just under 100, 198%, just under 200 in the period because of the reforms that we've put in place. Yes, that's where we are. Now, the last bar, which is, 20, which is the current year, uh, we have had some challenges and therefore the revenue has not grown as it is. We are now a good brand. We are able to attract financing from entities, from development partners, from the public sector, from organizations within and outside Uganda. And I think one of the most remarkable is that we're getting financing from the private sector. Private sector trusting us enough to give us their money to do uh, service delivery, hospitals, schools, and so on in the city, which is remarkable uh, for a city like Kampala. The challenges are we didn't have an, a, a adequate laws to, for any revenue enhancement. We are trying to revise that, working with the political side and parliament. The other major challenge is political interference in the revenue collection in, initiatives. The, the politicians want popular policies. Tax collection cannot be popular, it, it, but it is necessary. So we've had a lot of problems there. Um, we say one thing, the politicians say something else, and then in the end, the, bar, the, the nice looking bar graph gets messed up. Um, we have also seen delays in implementing some of the initiatives. Some have to go through legislature, some have to go everywhere, and they've been lost um, or delayed. And we've also had some cases of taxpayer non-compliance. Um, these are other initiatives, I think these presentations will be uploaded, and we are seeing the revenue of Kampala growing. And therefore, um, in conclusion, I want to, see, to say that as cities and urban centers, uh, because of the growing needs of our people, we need to move away from looking at government as a source of funding, because as Astrid said, that money is not going to come. If it's going to come, it's going to be very slow and very inadequate. We've got to find innovative ways of raising revenue for the people uh, to do the service delivery that our people need and be able to develop the smart cities that we talk about all, that, all the time in conferences like this and be able to implement them to make our cities more efficient, more sustainable, and more beneficial to the people we serve. Thank you so much for giving me your time. <laughs>